Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. Today is Saturday, the 12th of March, 2022, and we'll start off with the first story of the day, Thailand affirms neutral stance. Thailand has confirmed its neutrality in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, saying it remains committed to a balanced foreign policy that is in the country's best interests. Government spokesman Tanakorn Wang Bungan Chana clarified the government's stance on the Russia-Ukraine situation on Thursday, saying that since the start of the conflict, Prime Minister and Defence Minister Prayut chan cha had laid down a policy of supporting dialogue to find a peaceful resolution in accordance with the principles of the United Nations Charter. Evacuating Thais out of Ukraine had been a top priority and it has been carried out successfully, he said. As a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, Thailand has also made its position clear via a statement by the bloc's foreign ministers calling on all parties to exercise maximum restraint and make the utmost effort to pursue dialogue through all channels to de-escalate tension. Given the threat posed by COVID-19, Thailand does not want to see any international conflicts and tensions to compound the public health crisis and strongly believes a solution to the conflict can be achieved through peaceful means, Mr. Tanakorn said. Now, Tani Sankrat, spokesman of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, said the ministry has approved 2 million baht for humanitarian aid to Ukraine after it received a request for help from the Ukrainian embassy in Bangkok. Mr. Tani said the donation will be sent to the Thai embassy in the Polish capital, Warsaw, which borders Ukraine. The money will be used to buy daily necessities for people in Ukraine affected by the fighting. The items will be handed out via the Ukrainian Red Cross Society or other international organizations, he said. This marks the government's second humanitarian donation to Ukraine. The first donation, worth 1 million baht, was made back in 2019 to assist in procuring humanitarian and medical relief for people displaced in the country's eastern region. That donation was made via the International Committee of the Red Cross and the Thai Red Cross Society, Mr. Tani said. Now, moving along, Kokut Luxury Resort owner may face charges over faulty fire alarm system. Authorities are planning to press charges against the owner of a luxury resort on Kokut Island in Thailand's eastern province of Trap for failing to maintain the fire alarm system. The alarm was not triggered when massive fire broke out early in the morning of Sunday, an incident which could have led to loss of guests' lives. One of those guests is a medical influencer who took to Facebook reporting that she had suffered a fractured vertebrae during her escape from the blaze. She was, she claims, faced with the choice of undergoing surgery or six weeks of bed rest. She has chosen the latter, saying it will allow her to resume daily activities sooner while insisting she saw no smoke detector in the bedroom as claimed by the resort in the statement. An initial investigation shows the resort has insurance worth 902 million baht and that it did have smoke detectors installed, just that they seemed to be not working at the time of the incident. Trat Governor Chamavit Tarat, who inspected the site, has also criticized the hotel operators for its tardiness in its communication with the authorities and its lack of clarity on how affected customers may be compensated. So I guess in this particular story, the hotel's fire alarm system was not working correctly. And I guess during this kind of COVID times when hotels have not been functioning at 100%, have had reduced revenues and things like this, I'm suspecting things like general maintenance and preventative maintenance of hotels like this is just not being done for a lack of finance. Fire alarm systems are very, very expensive to maintain. And in this case, it seems the owner has prioritized other things over the health and safety of his customers. I believe this is a five star hotel. And if you're paying five star prices for a five star resort, then you expect five star service along with five star safety measures. And clearly, this was not in place at this hotel. And literally speeding along, GPS guides pickup driver into canal, five swim to safety. A man following GPS directions on his phone drove his pickup into a canal on Thursday night, but he and his four passengers were fortunately unscathed. 
The vehicles plunged into the water was reported at about 8.30 p.m. and sent police and rescue workers rushing to Lambarabun Canal under a bridge in Tamban Talard of Moang District. They found a black Vigo pickup truck nose down in the canal and five people shocked but safe on the shore, said Police Lieutenant Prasapat Chai, duty officer of Johor. The driver, Kun Naman, 39, said he and his relatives were returning to Geng Sanam, Nang District after attending a housewarming at a friend's place in Muang District. It was dark and he was not familiar with the road, so he used the GPS system on his mobile phone for directions. At the U-turn beneath the bridge, the GPS system instructed him to go straight ahead. He followed the directions and the vehicle plunged down a bank and nose first into the canal. He and his four passengers quickly opened the doors and made their way onto the canal side. Luckily, nobody was hurt, Mr. Manoon said. Rescue workers towed the pickup from the canal to a garage for repairs to the damaged front section. In November last year, a young man drowned after his SUV plunged in into Chao Praya River at a U-turn under a bridge of Nakhon Sawan. Thai media reported that Tirupat, 27, was returning from his girlfriend's birthday party on the night of November 5th and also was relying on a GPS for directions home. He also took a U-turn underneath a bridge in Tambong Klang Dead in Muang District. Tirupat's vehicle went through an opening in the barrier and into the swiftly flowing river. His dead body was found three days later. And that leads us into today's featured story, which is in relation to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, and they have been devising a plan to relax the travel rules. The Tourism Authority of Thailand is preparing a plan to relax travel rules in line with the timeline to declare COVID-19 an endemic disease on July 1. The tourism goals for revenue and arrivals this year might be downgraded because of surging oil prices and inflation caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, said TAT Governor Yutasak Supasorn. Mr. Yutasak said the plan to label COVID-19 endemic from the second half of the year will lead to further relaxations, including the termination of the Thailand Pass, marking a milestone for the industry. The agency has to start working on new proposals over the next four months, he said. However, an RT-PCR test result from tourists remains essential for the time being as the country is struggling with an overwhelming daily caseload, said Mr. Yutasak. He said Thailand should adopt safety procedures and learn lessons from other countries that have already opened to ensure the kingdom remains competitive in luring international tourists. TAT plans to propose further easing of travel restrictions at the next Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration meeting on March 18th. Mr. Yutasek said even though July is summer season for the long-haul market like Europe and tourists may prefer inter-regional travel, Thailand can expect more tourism arrivals from short-haul destinations. Key source markets include India, which has an air travel bubble agreement with Thailand, as well as Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam, which plans to fully reopen from March 15th. Malaysia agreed to reopen its land border with Thailand on April 1. The agency wants to closely monitor the Russia-Ukraine conflict as it has triggered soaring oil prices, which directly affect airlines' costs. The TAT will wait until the end of this month before providing a new tourism forecast for the year, he said. As Songkran approaches next month, the agency plans to follow the CCSA decision on whether to allow the annual water festival to resume for the first time in two years. The 2020 and 2021 celebrations were cancelled due to the pandemic. If the CCSA approves Songkran celebrations, the TAT will issue marketing plans to strengthen tourism sentiment during the long holiday, said Mr. Yutasak. The domestic market requires reassessment as local tourists may continue to travel, but for fewer days and with minimal spending because of higher oil prices and inflation. Tourism is still a key engine to revive our economy, even though revenue was stymied by a negative factors, he said. The tourism revenue goal is 1.28 trillion baht this year, of which 626 billion is to come from 10 million international tourists. Another 656 million baht is to come from 160 million domestic trips. Now, this recent statement from the Tourism Authority of Thailand comes in the wake of the government announcing the roadmap to endemic, which should begin sometime around July 1st, though I don't know how you can pick a date and say we're going to declare a disease endemic there based on four criteria. Now, some of the criteria for the endemic status are a little odd. They want one to 2,000 cases per day only and a drop in the mortality rate. 
Now the one to 2000 cases daily, I am just a little bit confused where they're gonna get that from. Thailand hasn't had that in over a year. And we all know with Omicron, it is very, very transmissible, spreads very fast, and it's not really realistic. If you look around the world right now, Omicron is spreading very fast. Countries which are wide open are experiencing high levels of Omicron, but they just continue as they go along because severe illness just doesn't exist and hospitals are not overwhelmed. Now within the Tourism Authority of Thailand, there seems to be some realization finally that they are falling behind the rest of the world and their competitors in terms of their reopening. The Thailand Pass doesn't seem to be all that it was and certainly not what they've tried to promote it as. It has hindered international travel and well let me say it differently not hindered at the beginning it had its place they tried to reopen slowly but we're nearly a year on from the Phuket sandbox which I guess started in July so we're 10 months or nine months since then and it had its place at the beginning but now when you look around the world and you see the likes of Vietnam Cambodia Philippines Malaysia Singapore Australia pretty much all of Europe the USA and other countries Mexico and other countries like that that have nearly fully reopened. Thailand is way down the list now in terms of where it is. And the Thailand Pass has become redundant. It's just not necessary. Based on what the governor has said, Yutasek Supasorn, it looks like the pre-COVID flight PCR test will still be here for at least a few more months. I am hearing rumors that the arrival PCR test may be cancelled and replaced with a rapid antigen test or ATK as they call here in Thailand. I think that would be a positive step. I think getting rid of the Thailand Pass would certainly boost tourism greatly. People do find it cumbersome. Now, I do know that some older people, because I've had older people contact me asking me, do they know anyone who could help them do it because they have issues doing it? And it has restricted them traveling to Thailand. Now, Th Thailand, a lot of the time, wants to promote itself as a retirement country, a place where foreigners come to retire. But don't make things too difficult by having a Thailand Pass, which kind of stymies that in some way. Now, it looks like the Thailand Pass will go from July 1st onwards. I think this would be very, very positive, though I don't know why it couldn't happen next month. There seems to be this whole idea still that COVID is a foreigner thing. I mean, yesterday we had 40 arrivals that tested positive for COVID, but in the rest of the country, we had nearly 60,000 cases of COVID. So it's not a foreign issue. COVID is spreading throughout the country. And I don't think they need to overly worry about a few tourists bringing COVID with them into the country. Now, remember, all these tourists are fully vaccinated. They've had a PCR test before they've left. They have adequate insurance and probably safer than the average local or expat who currently live in the country. And as I've said many, many times, they have a lot more chance of getting COVID in Thailand than they do have bringing it in. So having these restrictions still really doesn't make sense when your country is in the middle of the fourth or fifth wave and you know daily 50 to 60,000 cases. The Minister of Health seems to talk a lot about well we need to make sure that you know COVID isn't coming in from abroad and he keeps saying this a lot but I'm not sure why because as I said 40 cases yesterday 60 the day before it's certainly not something you should be really concerned about. The majority of cases also come from Russia and some former USSR countries around Russia that may be still influenced by Russia. And there has been a lot of talk and skepticism over the validity of their PCR testing and whether these test results and certificates are actually real. But this is kind of the first positive news in relation to the Thailand Pass being scrapped that I've heard for quite a while. I think, as I said, the realization is there, they're just falling way behind the rest of the world and it's time to move forward. I see that as very, very positive. So I put it out to you guys there. Now, a lot of you guys on here, you always talk about you'd love to come to Thailand, but the Thailand Pass is completely putting you off coming and you don't want to get caught up in the Thai bureaucracy and all those other things. So if the Thailand Pass was scrapped tomorrow, would it incentivize you to travel to Thailand? Or do you still worry about the amount of COVID here in the country and is that putting you off? What would attract you to making that trip again to Thailand? I'd love to know your comments, guys, as always down in that comment section. And moving along, marijuana legalization generates over 7 billion bad income to Thailand, says the health minister. Thailand's public health minister said on Friday that the country has recorded over 7 billion baht of income after the legalization of cannabis for medical purposes. During a medical conference in Kanchanaburi province, Minister Anutan Sharvakul said that Thailand has made considerable steps in developing cannabis as a new economic crop and generating more income for Thai people. 
We are working to allow Thai people to cultivate cannabis for medical use without permission like other herbs, Anatan said. Thailand became the first country in Southeast Asia to legalize marijuana for medicinal use by delisting it as a controlled drug under the Narcotics Code. The new cannabis laws have since paved the way for many to legally grow cannabis for medical and research purposes under the government's permission. However, cannabis products that have more than 2% of THC, the psychoactive element found in cannabis, is still unlawful. There are currently over 240,000 patients being treated with marijuana in both traditional and modern medicine, according to the Public Health Ministry. With goals to revive the lackluster tourism industry, public health officials said earlier this week that they view legalization of cannabis as the nation's secret weapon, one where they could lure foreign visitors. This comes in the wake of the government announcing the COVID situation to be endemic by July 1st. Now, in an interesting development, Facebook eases rules to allow violent speech against Russian invaders. Facebook said Thursday that due to the invasion of Ukraine, it has temporarily eased its rules regarding violent speech to allow statements like debt to Russian invaders, but not credible threats against civilians. Moscow's internationally condemned invasion of its neighbor has provoked unprecedented sanctions from Western governments and businesses, but also a surge of online anger. As a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we have temporarily made allowances for forms of political expression that would normally violate our rules like violent speech, such as debt to the Russian invaders, Facebook's parent company Meta said in a statement. We still won't allow credible calls for violence against Russian civilians, it added. Facebook made its statement after a Reuters report citing the firm's emails to its content moderators, which said the policy applies to Armenia, Azerbaijan, Estonia, Georgia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovakia and Ukraine. Facebook and other US tech giants have moved to penalize Russia for the attack on Ukraine, and Moscow has also moved to block access to leading social media network as well as Twitter. Russia thus joins the very small club of countries barring the largest social network in the world along with China and North Korea. Since Moscow's invasion of Ukraine last month, Russian authorities have stepped up pressure against independent media even though press freedom in the country were already rapidly waning. Blocking of Facebook and restricting of Twitter last week came the same day Moscow backed the imposition of jail terms on media publishing false information about the military. In this context, Facebook had played a key information distribution role in Russia, even as it endures withering criticism in the West over matters ranging from political division to teenagers' mental health. The war is meanwhile taking place during a period of unprecedented crackdown on the Russian opposition, which has included protest leaders being assassinated, jailed or forced out of the country. Big US tech firms like Apple and Microsoft have announced halting the sale of their products in Russia, while other companies have made public their pauses of certain business activities or ties. Last week, US internet server provider Cogent Communications said it had terminated its contracts with customers billing out of Russia. The Washington Post reported Cogent has several dozen customers in Russia, with many of them, such as state-owned telecommunication giants Rostelcom, being close to the government. It's exactly the kind of measures Ukrainian officials had been campaigning heavily for as they asked Russia to be cut off from everything from Netflix to Instagram. And finally, the Phuket News Daily Report. Emergency food relief reaches Koh Samui. Living Waters Phuket this week continued its efforts to support vulnerable communities in need, only this time expanding beyond the Phuket and Panya areas and onto the communities in Koh Samui. Phuket Call Centre to help Russians, Ukrainians stuck in Thailand, well received. The tourist call centre launched to provide assistance to Russian and Ukrainians stuck in Phuket due to cancelled flights or unable to pay for hotel or other accommodation due to sanctions against Russia for the invasion of Ukraine has already helped more than a dozen people, Phuket officials have announced. And finally, poor Phuket House fire victims receive a helping hand. Phuket officials have reached out to help a poor family of a father and his three young children after a house fire destroyed most of their belongings earlier this week. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kira Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.